Uh, buenas tardes y bienvenidos a todos. Good evening and I welcome you all to this webinar on teaching and learning Spanish in India. I'm Neha Tyagi, Assistant Professor at Global Languages Center at Jindal University, and I thank you all for taking time out and being here today. Muchas gracias. Well, joining us this evening to talk on the theme are two distinguished speakers and our panelist y me produce un gran placer presentarles. We have with us Dr. Oscar Pujol. Buenas tardes. Uh, Señor Pedro Serrano Navarro. Buenas tardes, Señor Navarro. Y and our panelist, Professor Dr. Gopal Nayak. Now, I, I would first like to introduce uh, to you all uh, Dr. Oscar Pujol. He, uh, we all know him, but uh, to our students, uh, Dr. Oscar Pujol is the director at the Instituto Cervantes, New Delhi, and someone who has been instrumental in establishing the Institute in India. Dr. Pujol studied uh, Sanskrit at the Banaras Hindu University, where he took his PhD with the addition of Samarthpada of the Tantra Pradipa, a manuscript on Sanskrit grammar. He has published several books and translations from Sanskrit, among them The Wisdom of the Forest, translations from the Upanishads, Hymn to the Earth, The Love Thief, Savitri, Kavya Purusho Tupatit of Rajashekara, The Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, Rasa, Aesthetic Pleasure in Indian Aesthetics, From the Ganges to the Mediterranean, and two monographs, one on Samkara and another on Patanjali. He has more than 100 sorry, published articles and reviews. He has also published the Sanskrit Catalan Dictionary in 2005 and the Sanskrit Spanish Dictionary in 2019 of 64,000 words that for the first time includes the etymologies of contemporary philology and those of Indian grammarians. In 2002, he helped in establishing Casa Asia in Barcelona as the director of educational programs, introducing the teaching of Asian languages, promoting the creation of Asian degrees at Spanish universities and fostering Indo-Spanish Indo relations. He founded in 2007, the Instituto Cervantes of New Delhi, he has also directed the Instituto Cervantes of Porto Alegre, Rio de Janeiro, and FES. And presently, we have him again as the director of Instituto Cervantes of New Delhi. And it's an honor to have you here with us today, Dr. Pujol. Uh, well, joining Dr. Pujol, uh, we have with us uh, Senor Pedro Serrano Navarro. He is the head of the studies at the Instituto Cervantes in New Delhi. Uh, Mr. Navarro has a degree in English Philology from the Universidad Autónoma Madrid and a master's degree in LA from University of Alcala de Henares. Mr. Serrano has been a translator with Editorial Synthesis, as well as a pedagogical advisor, director of research and training, and author of didactic materials with Editorial Adelsa. He was a professor in various centers of Madrid, Granada, Malaga, and Sao Paulo, as well as academic coordinator in the Cervantes Institute of Belo Horizonte. And he has been involved in teacher training programs in various European, North American, and Brazilian institutions. Bienvenido, Senor Serrano. I would now like to invite the panelists for the session. We have with us a professor, Dr. Gopa Nayak, who is our director of Global Languages Center and by whose initiative we've been able to organize this event. Professor Dr. Nayak uh, is an educationist with experience in researching, teaching, and training English communication skills to learners in India, Hong Kong, and United Kingdom. She has a DPhil and Master's in Applied Linguistics and Second Language Acquisition from the Department of Education, University of Oxford. She has a Master's degree in Sociology from Delhi School of Economics and in English Language Teaching from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. She, her research in, interests include a professional communication in English and teaching pedagogy for ESL and EFL learners, among others. Professor Nayak is also a writer and her creative writing includes poetry in Uriya and English. Well, I would now like to hand over this session to Professor Gopa Nayak. Gracias. Thank you, Neha, <clears throat> for that um, very pleasant um, biographical report of all three speakers. Uh, and I feel envious of Dr. Pujol that he has uh, really read and researched on some of the gems of Sanskrit literature. And I feel really, really very small in front of him that it's in, even though it's my culture, I know less than him. 
Uh, so, and I always wanted to, since I came across his um, credentials, I always wanted to listen to him. And the added attraction is that my father was a Sanskrit scholar. So even though I don't have a Sanskrit degree, I have read all these things starting from my childhood. So I always wanted to know uh, now how you look at Indian culture and Indian languages uh, in the context of Spanish as a foreign language for us. Um, so I will hand over to you now, and if you can shed light on uh, language, I think uh, language teaching and other things, we will give it to the other speaker who is perhaps more towards grammar and language and didactics. But from you, we would like to know about the multicultural or the cultural and the linguistic relation be between Spanish and English. I hand over to you and uh, we should listen to you without wasting time. Thank you so much and honored uh, to have you here. And one more disclaimer that this, uh, uh, this uh, session is going to be recorded and uh, many students have joined us as you can see, they will ask you questions and even the recording will be part of our archive and we will use it as and when needed. So I hope uh, you won't have any problems with that. So over to you now, Professor, uh, Dr. Pujol. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Sarvam kushalam bartate. Ahamati prasanno asmi. Yatas mina vasare. Spanish vasha vishaye bhaktum shagnomi. Chintayam chinta mat kulishyat. Ahamto sanskrita sambashanam na karishami. Angrezi basham bashayishami. I am very happy to be with you. Wanted to say a few words in Sanskrit. Although today we won't be speaking about Sanskrit, but we'll be speaking about Spanish and about the Instituto Cervantes in New Delhi. But it is a great, great pleasure to be with all of you here, to with all friends and, and all almost relative to us, because you have accompanied us in these many years of introducing Spanish in India. No? I will start, so thanks very much, Professor Gopanayak, Director of Global Languages Center at the OP Jindal Global University. Thank you also, Professor Neha Tiagi, Assistant Professor in Spanish. It's really a great pleasure to be here. I hope we can one day come and visit you there once this pandemic is over. And I hope also, you know, that you come and visit our, our center, which I think you have already done here in Delhi. No? I will start, especially for your students, um, informing them what is the Instituto Cervantes. I think it is necessary. And I would like to say that it's a public institution founded in 1991 by the government of Spain, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And as such, we are attached to the Spanish Embassy in Delhi. And the aim of the Instituto Cervantes is promoting Spanish language teaching and the dissemination of the culture of Spanish speaking countries, a thing which includes all the Latin American countries. So um, if we do an exhibition on an Argentinian painter or a Mexican photograph, that's also the that photographer, that's also very, very much um, welcome. No? It has our institution, it's therefore only 30 years old. Next year, we'll celebrate our 30th anniversary, but we have more than 80 centers present in more than 44 countries. The Instituto Cervantes specializes in the teaching of Spanish as a foreign language to young professionals. And it has its own syllabus, which establishes the appropriate foundations for the teaching of a universal, well-spoken Spanish, while respecting the variety found among the diverse Spanish-speaking communities. You should understand that the Spanish has many flavors and many accents. Although the language is one like English, the situation is very similar to English, no? It's different the uh, Spanish um, um, spoken in Spain or in Mexico, they are the same language, but the accents are very different. Teaching at the Instituto Cervantes is done in a flexible manner with the aid of the most up-to-date technology. And teachers include both native and non-native speakers. And the teaching staff is specialized in modern techniques for the teaching of Spanish as a foreign language. 
All teachers take courses designed to perfect their skills on a yearly basis to ensure quality service. Its courses are adapted to the levels established by the common European framework of reference for languages. And the Instituto Cervantes, and that's also very important to say, can also offer special courses adapted to specific needs, say Spanish for business, Spanish for tourism, Spanish for law, Spanish for design, et cetera, et cetera. No? It is also very important, and I think Pedro will also speak about that, the, the, the DELE examinations in Spanish, which is the diplomas in Spanish as a foreign language, which is the only officially accredited degree in Spain as a foreign language at the corresponding levels. They are, these examinations are internationally recognized by private companies, chambers of commerce, and public and private educational systems. Those titles are awarded by the Spanish Ministry of Education and managed by the Instituto Cervantes all over the world. Let me take a little bit, you know, on a personal history. As you know, the Instituto Cervantes in Delhi was founded in 2007. At that time, you know, we didn't have this wonderful building that we have now at Connacht Place um, in Hanuman Road, but we started with a, a, in a very small flat in Jampura, and we had only a handful of students. Later on, we moved to our present location in Hanuman Road. This is an impressive building that was finally inaugurated by the now King and Queen of Spain. You can see the picture on top of my, of my office. You see there the picture of, 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 at that time they were the prince and the princess of Spain. Now they are the king and the queen of Spain, His Excellency Felipe, His Highness Felipe, and Her Highness Leticia. And they were here in a way that you can see there is a Bharat Natyan dancer there. She is Gita Chandra. I don't know if you know her. He's a very well-known dancer in, in, in India. And she's performing actually um, the poems of St. John of the Cross that I myself translated into Sanskrit and she put the music and the choreography. And that was offered as a gift, you know, to our, to our prince and princess on the occasion of this inauguration to celebrate this coming together of the culture of Spain and India. Back in 2009, the Instituto Cervantes was a small baby. I saw it, it's how it was born, you know, and now it's become an impetuous and enthusiastic young man. I won't say an angry young man, as you say in many, in the, in the Indian pictures, you know, like Amitabh Bachchan, but I say that an enthusiastic young man is still growing, but it's grown so, so much that now, and you pay attention to that, the Delhi, the, the Instituto Cervantes at Delhi is the center with the highest number of students in the entire network of Instituto Cervantes. In this more than 80 centers all over the world, from New York to Tokyo, from, from Beijing to Moscow, from Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo to, 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 to Paris and London. So this is the center that has the highest number of students, doubling the number of students to the second center in the whole network. So the success in Delhi has been really impressive. And again, I have to thank here many people, of course, because this has been a work an ongoing work for the last um, almost 11, 12 years actually, or 13 years. But I have to thank especially our head of studies here, Pedro Navarro, who is this night with us, and his team of teachers, because since he came four years ago, he gave really a, a big fillip to the, to the, to the whole, to the whole um, 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 enrollment of students. He's been very active. He will explain later. He's been also very successful, and I would like him to elaborate on that in, in um, um, transferring the face-to-face -face learning to the online learning, which is the big um, challenge that we have all of us to face during these days of the pandemic. No? And since I came, I was, you know, five years here. I left Delhi in 2012, when already was quite well established. We had Picasso in our in our center because we do also culture. We had Goya. We had a um, um, lot of people, you know, um, um, in, in very interesting cultural programs. And I, I was five years in Brazil. Now I have come back. 
after seven years, I am, and I am very happy to be back here. But my, my aim now, after seven years, seeing that the growth in Delhi has been so impressive, was to extrapolate this success to other parts of India. And before the pandemic, we worked in, in that sense. Eh? And we went with Pedro to several places in India, as far as, as, as Keral, to Punjab, and, and, and well. But then the pandemic changed the rules of the game. And as I said, we have to adapt to the online mode. And, as, and, and this has been, so far, has been done quite successfully. Eh? And I hope, you know, that the lesson learned in the pandemic, of course, is that now we can reach all of India with our online courses. And we, we didn't do that before. We were just confined to Delhi. So the pandemic has taught us, you know, how to go and, 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 and reach students in, in, in Bangalore, in Chennai, in Calcutta, in Mumbai, in Hyderabad. And that's it's been a very interesting experience because that's open our scope very much, you know? And we hope that when this is finished, we will also try to open extensions of, of Cervantes in different places in India. But I think it is important to, to think about that, you know, that when the pandemic ends, and I think now the end, it's in sight because the vaccines are working. And we hope that by next summer, things will more or less be returning to normalcy all over the world, because this is a global phenomenon. Huh? When the pandemic ends, we will know, we will have more resources and we will have learned that the future lies in the coupling of face-to-face -face and online learning within a unique seamless teaching space. And that's a very important lesson that we are learning. And I think it's the same for you at Jindal University and at many other universities. We won't go back to the same kind of teaching. We will continue teaching at the classroom but I think we'll be much more enriched after this experience that sometimes we feel um, it is so painful and so terrible, no? but we'll come out of, of here with much more experience. Let me just dwell a little bit on why to study Spanish. I always say that learning a language is like discovering a new continent. And the Spanish speaking continent is populated by more than 50 crore people in 21 countries and so many cultures because Spanish is global, is a global language, is a multinational language, and it is a multicultural language. And that's the power of learning a language that gives the freedom to explore the farthest places in that continent. You can go to a remote village in Colombia, a big city in Mexico, see the discussions in the parliament of any speaking, Spanish speaking country of the world, see any movie, read any book or newspaper, talk to any person or discover any hidden gem of the geography of that big, big continent, which is the Spanish speaking continent. So learning Spanish takes you to many, many places. Just to put a few, few numbers in it. Spanish is the second mother tongue in the world by number of speakers after Chinese. And the third language in a global tally of speakers after English and Chinese. Also very important, more than 40 million people speak Spanish in the United States, being the fifth in the world in terms of native speakers. After Mexico, Colombia, Spain, and Argentina, the United States is the, is, is the highest in, in, in Spanish speaking um, population. It is said, it is predicted that in 2060, the US will be the second Spanish speaking country in the world after Mexico and ahead of Spain. In terms of economy, the world Spanish speakers have a combined purchasing power of around 9% of the world GDP. If the Hispanic community of the United States were an independent country, its economy would be the eighth largest in the world, ahead of the Spanish and behind only of the United States itself, China, Japan, Germany, India, the United Kingdom, and France. In fact, the relative weight of the GDP by purchasing power parity generated by countries where Spanish is an official language, means 21 countries without counting the United States, amounts to 7% of the world total. 
In fact, if we put together the GDP of 21 countries where Spanish is an official language, and along with the Hispanic community in the US, the Hispanic economy with a 9% of the world GDP would be the third in the world only after the US and China. So not that much for the importance that I think you, and you know very well of, of Spanish in terms of economic. In international relations, Spanish is the second most important language, is the third most used language in the United Nations and the fourth in the European Union. Just to go very quick, um, after English and Chinese, Spanish is the third most used language on the internet. And the second in most digital platforms such as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Wikipedia. Well, um, as I said, I'm coming here after, after seven years away, and it gives me an immense pleasure to see how Spanish has grown during these last seven years, no? Um, it is still the third most studied foreign language after behind French and German. And according to a study by India today, Spanish is the third language whose knowledge provides better salaries in India behind Chinese and French, but, but ahead of German. One pleasant surprise upon my return after seven years is the growth of Spanish in school education. I remember, you know, at that time um, and 10 years back, there were very few schools, 10, 12 years ago, very, very few schools in Delhi that used to teach Spanish. But now, you know, we are counting more than 40 only in, in the Delhi area, you know? So as grow immensely. And as I said, Spanish has a great potential in India because it's present in the United States. It is an incentive for the population to learn in, as the United States is the professional mecca for young Indians. The increasing relation, both commercial and cultural, between India and Latin America is another guarantee of the survival of Spanish in India. Clearly, the, when we ask our students why they study Spanish at the Instituto Cervantes, and I'm sure you do the same at the university, no? the first answer is for optimization of professional possibilities. Cultural, intellectual, or personal preferences come only second. In this sense, I would like to share with you the opinion of one of our students, Aman Sharma, which he examined why um, many of our students are learning Spanish. First of all, he advises to have the B2 level before launching into the job market. And basically the job opportunities are the following. First, work in a multinational companies that require knowledge of Spanish work in Spanish-speaking embassies, as most Latin American countries have representation in New Delhi. In fact, if you go to the embassy, Latin American em the Spanish embassy, a very high percentage of the workers of these embassies have been students of the Cervantes Institute. Knowledge of Spanish facilitates employment in sectors such as publishing, hotel service, airlines, export agencies, radio stations, and commercial organizations. For the possibility to become an interpreter and work full or part-time on your own. Three, to pursue, to pursue a career as language teacher, as there are many vacancies in metropolitan area schools. There is always a lack of, of, of Spanish teachers, in, not only in India, but also in countries like Brazil, Morocco, and many other places. Take a master's degree and become a professor at the university and the possibility of working as a tour guide or pursuing a professional career in the tourism sector, as there are many tourism-based companies that require language profession. We can um, um, say many, some other reasons which are more cultural, you know, that I said also that Spanish as a global language is relevant in the United States. It makes it possible to travel to many countries, including the second country with the highest number of tourists in the world, which is Spain itself. And it allows you to discover the rich culture of Spain and Latin American countries. I would say it's not a difficult language to learn. And those who have a passion for soccer also find learning Spanish very rewarding. Eh? And of course, the possibility of studying in Spain itself. No? I will be ending this intervention. I want to take too, too long, but I would like to say that the image of Spain has also changed enormously in the last, say, 
when I, I was teaching Spanish in BHU in Banaras Hindu University in the 90s, people hardly knew about Spain. It was just beginning, no? When you say, um, which country are you from, Spain? I mean, exceptionally highly educated people, people couldn't locate our country very well, no? And that changed after the Olympics, Barcelona Olympics, that changed a lot. And that's been keeping changing at very fast pace, no? And now um, Spain has, occupies, you know, a place in the imagination of the Indian young, young people, no? Of course, the latest trend has been soccer, and there's a lot of, of passion for that, and we have La Liga in here in, 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 in Delhi, and also the discovery of series and movies in Spanish on different online platforms that have become so, so popular in India, no? And I would say also, in addition, you know, more and more people know also higher aspects of culture. I would say ranging from the art of Picasso, Dali, the Prado Museum, the love for flamenco, dance and Latin music in general are very popular and tango classes also were very popular before the pandemic set in. And I think there is a much better appreciation of the literature in the Spanish language and also the rich heritage of Spanish culture and its diversity is also becoming better known. Gothic cathedrals, medieval castles, Roman and Muslim legacy, the work of architects such as Gaudi attract the curiosity of the Indian traveler. Now we have much, much numbers of Indians traveling to Spain, which that didn't happen earlier, no? I said, you know, that learning a language is like discovering a new continent. But I also say that as language and thought are deeply interconnected, learning a language is also like opening a new window into the reality and helps you to see the, a new world with the eyes of the new entire language. You open a new window to reality and you begin to see things that if you don't know the language, even if you travel to those countries, you are not able to appreciate, no? And also very important for the Indian imagination I've seen during these years is the idea of Spain as a, as a country where people know how to live well, enjoy the good life with good wines, excellent food, and especially the rich variety of popular festivals that reminds the Indian on festive traditions that you have, no? I always say that emotionally, Indians and Spaniards speak the same language. That's very true. I mean, we, all of us, feel very much at home here in India. And I think that when you go to Spain, um, if you are able to speak Spanish, because if you only speak English when you go to Spain, and you, are, you will face, I won't say difficulties, no, but you will only touch the surface of our wonderful country. Um, I am not... I think I am, I, my time is over, those 20 minutes that you allow me. And I think we'll need another session if we want to speak between the similarities between languages like Sanskrit, Hindi, and Spanish. Similarities that are there and you know very well. In Hindi, you have so many words. Pantaloon is pantalon. Almari is armario. Kamis is camisa. Sabun is jabon. Um, they, um, table, mess is mesa. No? And these are mostly long words, but you have another kind of words which are similar between Hindi and, 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 and Sanskrit and, and Spanish, which are of Indo-European origin, right? Like dant, we have diente, okay? We have um, um, words like nak is nariz, no? In Catalan, which is also a Spanish language, is my, is, is, this is nas, exactly the same as Sanskrit. A word like sap, which in his, is sarpa no? in Sanskrit, is serpiente in Spanish. You have words like now, which is nave in Spanish, no? In Catalan is the same, now, now is now. Both in Catalan and Hindi are exactly the same word. But we have words like um, pita, which is Pitri, which is Padre in Spanish. You see more, the similitude is better between Spanish and Sanskrit here than between Hindi and Spanish. And you have Matri, which is the Pratipadic word for, for, 
por, por mata, ma, which is madre in Spanish, matri, madre, you see there. And you have the numbers, you know, that are so close between Hindi and Spanish, like do, dos, tin, tres, che, seis, sat, siete. In, in Catalan, sat is set. You see, it's even more closer. And you have now, which is nueve in Spanish, no in Catalan, das, which is diez, and deu in Catalan, right? So there we could go along. And, and, and the common origin of, of the Indo-European origin of both um, um, Spanish languages and Indian languages um, tell us about a relation which we could, that will be the topic of another lecture. We hope another day we can, we can meet, no? And me kiavolo, agaran me me do tin shabda hindi me na kahu, miri atma santushti nahi hogi, no? Me janta ho ki ab log to push honge. Spanish sikhne ka ek aur karan hai. Ki Spanish sikhna bahut saral hai ab logo ke liye, no? Aur is saralta me karan yehi hai ki ucharan ki drishti se to Spanish to saral hai kyunki sounds to bahut kam hote hai. Sirf by sound hote hai Spanish me. 22. Or un mese, sirf do, tola, isko charan karne me tola mushkil hai. Ek to hai, ek urdu me milta hai, jota, jese han me, ye arabic sound hai. Spanish me to, arab, arabic ke pravao se to agaya ta na. Or dusra, urdu wale to isko charan sahi kar sakte hai na. Or dusra sound jo hai, wo theta. Jesse Fenisa, ye bod mushkil hai. Ye um, Spain ke alaba to dusre Spanish speaker bhi nahi kar sakte. Dusre Spanish bashi, matlab jo Latin American hai, uska ucharan bhi alag tarike se karte hai. Ne? Lekin baki, is liya ab log to jab Spanish um, um, bolne lagte hai, mujhe as chari ho ta hai ki itna saaf, itna sundar ucharan to ab, ab logo ke mo se nikalte hai. Ne? हमारे लिए तो ऐसा नहीं है हम लोगों के लिए तो हिंदी सीखना तो इतना कठिन है क्योंकि हम बाय से तो 50 तक जाना पड़ता है ना और बहुत मेहनत करना पड़ता है उसके बाद भी उच्चारण तो सही नहीं होता है तो इसका बहुत मतलब प्रेरणा है आप लोगों सीखने के लिए कि सारण है जो मिठास स्पेनिश भाषा में मिलती है वो भी हिंदी में मिलती है और अलग अलग बोलियों में मिलती है तो स्पेनिश सीखो Maza le lo o dunia ki safar achitara se kar. Bhaad bhaad dhanyo. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Puzol, for this um, very informative and inspiring uh, talk. I would request all the students to have questions, if any, and we will take those questions at the end. You can put your questions on the chat box and we can take them, right? Uh, so, um, just to uh, let um, Dr. Puzon know that here we are having uh, students who have taken Spanish as their elective and some of them are on the core course also. So basically when you are talking about the merits of Spanish, you are actually talking to the converted. So they have chosen, <laughs> chosen Spanish over the other languages because of the, all the reasons that you uh, had mentioned. So anyway, thank you. We will certainly have you another uh, for another session. And another thing, uh, we also have students from all over India. So it's not necessarily that we have students who they ask. There are students who don't understand Sanskrit. I think most of them don't understand. And there are also some students who do not understand even Hindi. So to all those students, you can still ask questions to Dr. Pujol if you still want a translation of your Hindi from him, right? Uh, so now I'll get it uh, over to Pedro to take us more into translation and grammar and students be ready with your questions or anyone who wants to know more information about um, teaching learning or prospects of learning French uh, sorry Spanish in India so have your questions ready and after Pedro's talk we will take your questions and put your questions in the chat box right uh, over to you Pedro thank you 
Thank you, uh, Dr. Nayak. Uh, well, uh, to me, it's kind of, it's, it's very difficult to have an intervention, but to intervene after Dr. Pujol's speech, it's not that easy. Uh, I wonder if I could, um, because I, I have I have prepared one uh, PowerPoint, one presentation. I don't know if I could uh, share it with the uh, with the, all the students and colleagues who are attending this uh, webinar. If so, that I think that could be very helpful in order to follow some 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 lines, some ideas that I, w I would like to express. Yeah, I think that should not be a problem at all. Um, please, IT team, can you can you direct how he can upload the PowerPoint? Okay. Well, it's just that I, I would like to share the screen, but if if not, I can begin. And and in the meantime, no, uh, no. if uh, actually we 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 uh, solve this technical yeah. problem, we can. No, just thus down the screen. If you see, there is a share screen button. If you upload, uh, yes, sh share that, and you uh, share your desktop with uh, by opening your PowerPoint. That should be. Yes, but it's. Sorry, but it says that uh, the it has been uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not allowed. But okay, yeah, I in think the meantime, it, I'm going just. I think you okay. someone has to make him a host, then uh, he can share the screen. Yeah, okay. the IT can. Yeah. Let me, let me. IT department, can you make okay. him a host? No, I can just. Um, can, okay. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I'm I'm going. I'm just going to. To begin with, with some uh, ideas that I would like to point out, some ideas for discussions that has to do with learning and teaching Spanish in India. Of course, uh, uh, I would like to um, I would like to well, point out that it is uh, it seems quite inappropriate to uh, draw uh, general conclusions about one population of uh, one billion people. So, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm just going to talk about my and uh, my colleague, my team experiences uh, with the Indian students, teachers, and and well, the whole functioning of the Instituto Cervantes. What can I um, what can I conclude from from that experience? Uh, of course, I, I won't I won't say this is a, a generalization that has to. Uh, be proven everywhere where where uh, all other colleagues are teaching. But uh, the first idea that I would like to share is the the tendency, the evolution of of Spanish learning in India. Well, here I have, and I'm going to show you these um, graphics if if I can in some minutes. Uh, the the evolution of Spanish uh, teaching and learning in India has been. Um, Quite overwhelming, to be honest. Uh, we, well, Instituto Cervantes, arrived here only ten years ago, but the numbers has has grown uh, in an um, exponential manner. And um, at this moment, even though we have arrived, as I said before, only ten years ago, we are so we more or less the same numbers of uh, other institutions that have been here for uh, for decades such as the Alliance Francaise and the Goethe Institute. So uh, each uh, year we are growing uh, around uh, from 22 to 34, uh, 35%. And uh, that's it. that is a, a very expressive number. Uh, even more if we think that uh, Instituto Cervantes has only one uh, center in India, in Delhi and not as some other institutions that uh, are quite spread into the Indian geography. Uh, that is, as, as uh, Dr. Pujols uh, pointed out, that is one of our uh, projects. Uh, we think that uh, uh, not only Instituto Cervantes, but many other uh, institutions uh, have to think about uh, offering good uh, uh, quality courses of Spanish to all people who are interested in all around India. And at this moment, uh, this is a possibility that we are working on, but uh, uh, it seems that it's not so, well, we're working on that idea. Okay, I think that at this moment I can share my yeah. screen. Um, 
well, uh, can you see the presentation? Yeah. Hello? Yes? Okay. Well, these are the numbers of Instituto Cervantes, but the numbers of, of uh, other institutions who are teaching Spanish are uh, similar. Uh, I've been in different places with different colleagues of the, uh, different regions and, and states of India. And uh, it's amazing how much and in, in what degree uh, Spanish students and interest in learning Spanish is growing in India. Uh, the reasons, uh, well, uh, Dr. Coyola has already uh, summed up some of the advantages and some of the uh, pros of studying Spanish, but uh, well, really, the idea is that uh, is growing steadily and, and it seems to have a very healthy uh, state. Uh, well, some data to reflect on. Uh, the expansion is not only on student hours in our case and in the case of other colleagues, but also in the certification. I don't know if you can see the DELE. DELE is this official certificate. Uh, it has more than double. It has is triple. Uh, we have triple the numbers in in five years, and and it's going to grow more and more and more. What does he have? What can we reflect? What can we think about when we see these figures? Uh, I think the first idea is that as as Jindal University is doing and some other institutions are doing and we are also doing. We can offer uh, courses to um, uh, all the students in India, provided we uh, transform our face-to-face uh, uh, -face activity to uh, digital uh, courses. And that, that is not uh, so simple. It uh, requires a lot of uh, teachers training and a lot of effort, but I think uh, uh, Indian students are very open-minded and are quite, um, uh, well, they don't reject the idea of having uh, online classes, not so much as some other nationalities. Uh, I keep in touch with um, other colleagues from other um, countries in the world, and there are places where people are more, they don't, they don't feel like having classes uh, which are not face-to-face, -face, which are not presential. But I think this is not the case in, in India mainly because the population, the Indian population is very, very young. And even our students, the profile of our students are very young. We have the majority of our students are from 18 to 24 uh, years old. That's around 80% of our students. And then we have a second uh, uh, section of students who are from 25 to 34 years old. But um, uh, in opposition to some other places, like, uh, for instance, in Europe, the uh, lang language learners here are quite, uh, the the, the, if they have some, a, a very specific figure, feature that is very relevant and very significant and different from other countries is that they are very young. Um, I would also think that, I would, I I would also like to uh, point it out that uh, uh, we have uh, developed a lot in terms of uh, consolidate uh, uh, three main formats of teaching in these last months. But I think uh, not only Instituto Cervantes, but many other institutions and colleagues are working in offering different formats in teaching. So um, in the long term, where when we come back to normality, uh, I think we're going to go back to face-to-face -face, um, classes, but we are going uh, to have uh, two other formats who are going to be consolidated by them, which are uh, class courses that are going to be done 100% online by video conference, as we are doing. And we are having a, around se uh, 70 to 80% of our newcomers, our new students, are from different places from India. Uh, so we don't, we used to have only students from Delhi, but now we have lots of students from different regions of India. From the from Bengala to Kerala to Punjab to lots of different places. We even have students who are Indian, but at this moment they are living uh, abroad. 
So they are living sometimes in Bangkok or they are living in, uh, in Sri Lanka. So the, I think the, these three formats, the face-to-face, um, uh, -face, the 100% online, and the blended learning that we are offering at this moment, uh, they're going to be consolidated. And we are going to, uh, not only us, but I think some other institutions are going to offer this as a, an established and well-founded um, offer or educational program. Uh, what are the, the needs that I find? Well, first we have to work in the digital transformation of our practices. Uh, and that also has to do a lot with uh, teacher training programs. Um, in my experience here in, in, in Delhi, that is one of the things that uh, we work uh, the most to, we train teachers because they have very, very good uh, foundations, but we thought that with some features that they still didn't manage, they could really, uh, well, um, uh, uh, improve very much in the uh, professional performance. And we think, and I personally think we should uh, provide a better ground for a safer expansion. And I always, um, I always invite my colleagues, my Spanish uh, teachers, or my, my professional colleagues to think about the, maybe the idea of, of having um, an, a professional association of Spanish teachers, because it's something that really lacks. We still don't have that. And I personally think that uh, it could be very good in order to voice the voiceless uh, opinion of the Spanish teachers all over India. And uh, by means of that, I think we could improve the conditions and the, um, we could, uh, as, as we are doing at this very moment, we are just uh, sharing uh, ideas and sharing experiences. Well, if we could have that ground throughout um, or by means of uh, a teacher's association, I think that would be uh, very, very helpful for everyone, not mainly to for Instituto Cervantes, but I think for the expansion, the, a, a safer and healthier expansion of uh, Spanish all over India. Uh, well, uh, what are the, what I would say, the internal needs or the, the, the things that I, th I, I consider we have to reflect on or we have reflect in our daily practices in Instituto Cervantes? Well, I, I'm going to point out two methodo methodological trends that I think are, are essential uh, when someone, uh, as me, a uh, Spanish teacher from Spain who has already been in a, a work in Germany, Italy, UK, and a lot of time in, in Brazil. When I arrive here, what are the things I should consider? Well, first, I, I think um, uh, it's essential to have a very flexible approach to uh, the practices you offer to your teacher, to your uh, students, and the methodology you impose or you propose to your uh, students and colleagues. Uh, in my case, as a head of studies, um, in my hand or in my, I, I can dismiss or I can back uh, one methodolog methodological approach. And I think when I arrive here, one of the of the ideas that I work with and I try to express to my colleagues is this of the post methodolog uh, post methodological uh, pedagogy. Uh, as uh, you can see here, this is a quotation. This is uh, from a book from uh, Bela Kumaravadi Belu, uh, who is a um, uh, distinguished. Uh, Indian scholar who is uh, at this moment professor emeritus at the San Jose University in California. And I think his, um, his ideas makes perfect sense when you go, uh, when you come to India and you see that your students are bilingual uh, when at home. Uh, some of them, they, they speak Hindi and Punjabi or Hindi and Bangla or Hindi and uh, Marathi, um, and they have, they even have different levels of, of competence, of linguistic competence. 
I even talked with some students and they, uh, I've been told that they learn uh, Hindi by uh, watching movies or by they learn another language by reading poems. Uh, they are very, um, they feel very attracted to Urdu because of, of its poetry. So the question is that this is a uh, multilingual uh, community and this is a place where people are really good at learning languages. So we should be more humble. And, um, and let me tell you that um, as a, someone who is uh, has been trained in in western uh, methodologies we have to come here with a little humble um, humbler um, approach and we have to see what's happening on, on classroom and we have to adapt uh, our methodologies to what uh, to the practice that we see every day on our classroom and this is the first idea that um, I stressed when I arrive here. Uh, here is um, uh, this fundamental book of uh, methodology, of the teaching methodology that I think is uh, one of the milestones of, uh, well, of the of last de decade. And uh, I think the, the, the main idea is that, um, uh, as I said before, uh, we have to observe the practices and what is happening at the classroom and um, and our theory has to raise from our practice we cannot impose a, the a theory on practice so uh, we have to be more flexible not so orthodox in imposing and uh, and applying uh, methodological trends that uh, by itself they are just the product of laboratory. Uh, we have to change that and we have to try to negotiate with reality. And that we, that is something we have done uh, as, a, as a daily practice in Instituto Cervantes. Uh, we, have, we have tried to learn uh, throughout everyday practice and throughout the things that we see and we observe in our students. The second um, reflection I would like to point out that has to do with methodology is what is called content-based approach. Okay, when uh, when I was thinking about, okay, let's try to illustrate this idea of content-based approach. Uh, instead of, of putting together images of what represents Spain to me, I just uh, took out this image, with, which is highly stereotypical. I know it's very, very stereotypical, but the idea is content of content-based approach is that um, a, a language courses, uh, okay, language courses are, uh, we, students go to language courses to learn language, but basically what they deal with, what the, 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 the fabric they, they touch are mainly text, uh, videos, audios, so, these are all cultural items, cultural contents. So the so we have to select and we have to carefully select those contents in order to attract our students and in order to convey an idea, um, not a stereotype, a non-stereotypical idea of what our community is. This is very, very, very important regarding Spanish because look, um, uh, we uh, as Spaniards. The, 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 from this country in Spain, we represent just 8% of uh, the speakers of this language. And if there is something that is really interesting about Spanish is that throughout Spanish, uh, throughout this language, you, we, you have a passport to get to understand different manifestations, cultural manifestations that are completely, completely different. Uh, tango, which is from in, from Argentina, doesn't have to do with me, with my culture. I just I I, I learn to feel it because uh, it's part of the uh, linguistic uh, community of Spanish. Salsa, which is from Cuba, is not really from Spain, so it's not from my cultural community. But I got get to love it because. Is very close to me because of the language. 
So um, one of the main uh, attractions, one of the main reasons to learn Spanish, uh, I think is the, 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 the idea of having this passport to get to know, to get in touch with very different uh, um, and, uh, and varied uh, cultural manifestations. Uh, in which sometimes the, the richest are not the ones that are produced in Spain, but the ones which are produced in Latin America. For instance, uh, contemporary literature. I would say that, and this is something that very few people will, will refuse to accept. Um, uh, in, in contemporary contemporary uh, uh, narratives from Latin America are uh, worldwide uh, well-known and are um, really, really interesting, much more than what has been produced in Spain. So how can we convey all this? Well, we have to select uh, ideas, select uh, cultural features and try to uh, flee, try to go away from cultural stereotypes. Again, here, this is a very stereotypical image I have never seen a taiga. I, I live in Delhi, but I think this is representative of, again, a very stereotypical and external uh, view of India. Uh, for many people, the most beautiful uh, monument in India would, would be, or the most well-known monument would be, of course, Taj Mahal. But for me, uh, well, uh, Humayun Tom, I prefer Humayun Tom, or to me, the, 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 the most beautiful place I, I've I've been, my favorite place here in, in Delhi is the nursery plant, which is close to, uh, to Humayun's tomb. So I know these images, but to me, what India means are more these images. Okay, oops. Uh, and, and again, you can say, well, this is not my India. Okay, but this is not your India, but it might be mine. Why so? Well, because, um, when I was, uh, when I didn't even know that I was going to live in, in India one day, uh, my parents have this uh, beautiful Ravi, Ravi Sankar concert at Woodstock Festi Festival. And by means of that, we got to know, um, well, the some parts of the Indian music. Of course, the Yapo trilogy is, um, is one of the most uh, well-known uh works of uh, indian cinema but is is from uh, west bengal and uh, and uh, well uh, it's not like uh, patal lok but uh, to me it was one of the first um well first um connections i had with uh, indian uh cinema and i also thought that uh that the uh, naipaul was indian well actually he's not so indian I thought that uh, Salman Rushdie, I remember when I read uh, Midnight Children, well, to me was one, um, he conveyed a lot of information for me uh, about India, long time before I, I arrived here. And no matter if you uh, like or you think these are representative uh, figures of India, uh, I, I have to tell you, well, these are the features, the 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 items I I got to know first about Indian culture, and I think we have to make a, a similar uh, questionnaire, a similar uh, well survey in with our with our students, because uh, our students they uh, they have a personal um, content based approach of each and every language they they study because they sometimes they share our same uh, main uh, references but sometimes the references are completely different they're completely completely different uh, so i uh, i can understand that for some of you raskin bond is not so important but raskin bond is the only indian writer i've got the opportunity to actually personally met in in uh, in Landor. and close to Raskin Bond is this uh, little church which is in Landor, uh, which is uh, is called uh, Kellogg's Church, and close to it is the is one um, Hindu um, uh, 
uh, sorry, Hindi, uh, Hindi school, where I would like to, I, I'm all, always trying to, or thinking of going to learn properly Hindi. So um, again, I tell you, this is not, this is as non-representative as the other image, but we personally, we all have images of the cultures we are learning or we are interested in learning. And uh, we have to try to convey all that information and negotiate all those contents with our students because we are going to connect with what they are interested in. In, um, well, um, why does a student, was, does an Indian student ever uh, study a foreign language? And this, this comes from our own uh, surveys. As Dr. Puyo said before, um, the main reason is because uh, they want to uh, improve their, um, their, their conditions, their work conditions, and they want to get a better job or work in an embassy or even being a Spanish teacher. So in order to attend to uh, answer this, uh, this objective that they have, I think that the best way uh, to do that is by means of offering a certification-oriented ex exams and tasks and projects that are taken from real life uh, conditions. I'm going to send you to show you some of the uh, tasks that we, uh, the digital tasks that we have developed on the last uh, three and four or four years, and I think they are. Uh, this has been a very, very successful uh, experience because um, it connected with all the interest and the needs uh, of expression, of self-expression that our students had. What is uh, um, uh, another feature that characterizes our age? Well, in our age, the self, the, before uh, the contents were done, by newspapers or by uh, some other actors. Today, if you see any, uh, even information, there are some uh, traditional newspapers or traditional, uh, well, uh, news agencies. But again and again, we, we see that um, different individuals are providing this um, information, are editing and publishing this information. So at this moment, I have a son, my son uh, gets more information throughout uh, TikTok or throughout uh, YouTube by means of TikTokers and YouTubers rather than conventional ways. So the idea is that we are not any longer in a society with where people, where some people produce contents and some other people consume that contents. At, at this moment, we have leveled that uh, situation. In some terms, we can say that we have democratized the access or the possibility of, ed of editing and publishing contents. And our students are part of that change. So they want to, when you, when you ask them to do a task, they want to talk about their, their daily life, they want to introduce their family. They want to uh, introduce the place, or, um, guide us throughout the places that, that they like the most in Delhi, or they want to show to talk about um, well different topics that they are interested in or that they uh, really would like to express in public. Here you have a, so a little selection of the of the more than 200 um, tasks that we publish, uh, every week we publish from around two to four different uh, uh, digital tasks of our students. And here you get so a little selection of them. You have a, uh, on the top, you have um, a student who uh, wanted to sh uh, show or wanted to yeah show her, her her house. Then this is a little joke, but uh, through Chatterpix, which is an app, uh, we uh, offer the opportunity to our students to introduce uh, any uh, character that they wanted to use. 
uh, in order to make use of the A1.1 contents, which are the most basic contents. So, but instead of just saying, okay, introduce yourself, uh, we said, okay, you can choose any historical or fictional uh, character. You can put it into chat topics and, uh, and then you can pretend to be, in this case, Akbar Imperator and uh, introduce yourself as if you were him. Then on the bottom line, you have um, a, one student who is introducing her family, another student who is talking about the languages, uh, the different languages are in India, and uh, on the on the extreme on the on the right, you have um, one student who wanted to show us how he uh, cooks a tortilla, which is a very uh, famous and, and and typical Spanish dish. Okay, why we why do we do this? We do this because um, students they don't they want to produce contents. As I said before, uh, this is a moment in um, in 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 the in, in in the way we produce and we consume uh, culture and contents, where everyone has the opportunity to publish their opinions in different uh, in different social networks, but also anyone can publish uh, any kind of work in internet. And our students, everyone from the, when, from in this age are doing this. So um, we are trying to offer them the opportunity to, to well, to see, to, to show everyone what they really care for, what they want to say, what they want to, express to their colleagues and the rest of the community. Okay, uh, finally, uh, I would like to point out some, some other features that we have been working with. The first and, and most um, uh, um, um, the, the, the one that has been quite um, produ uh, productive in terms of uh, digital transformation was the usage of LMS. Uh, as you know, this LMS uh, correspond to language management systems. Uh, you have different options. You can uh, use Edmodo, you can use uh, Moodle. Well, in our case, we used uh, Google Classroom. And, um, and the course planification and administration and, and communication with all the students, apart from using uh, a video conference device as Zoom, uh, was maintained by, uh, by using an L LMS. Uh, I think that um, we really have the, the, the very good idea uh, of beginning to use Google Classroom uh, almost two years uh, before the outbreak, the COVID outbreak. So when the COVID outbreak uh, unfortunately arrived and well, came to our lives, we uh, were already, uh, we knew how to manage that. And our students and teachers, they were both used to it. And uh, by means of that, the, the transformation from face to face to digital was a very harmonic, uh, very, um, mild one. In some other cases, I, I've been informed uh, by some colleagues that they ha they face many difficulties. But uh, to be honest, well, thanks to different trainings that we did before, uh, we, we uh, really didn't face many difficulties. I think this uh, is a tool that um, is going to be part of the everyday reality of teachers and, and students. And finally, I would like to um, point out that, okay, it's not only about uh, having an LMS to like Google or a Modo or Moodle in order to communicate and, uh, and well, and, and uh, put all the contents of the course or make the contents available to, to students. We have to transform the contents which were done uh, 
uh, to be um, used on an analogic environment, we have to transform those contents into the digital world. We have analyzed um, each and every material that we used when in face-to-face -face, uh, uh, um, classrooms, and we noticed that most of them, they, can, they don't work. They are very, very good materials. They are very good activities, but they need to be transformed because um, uh, when you have a, a computer in front of you, you have a mouse, you want to do different, you want to, to work in a very different way than when you have one pen and you have a paper, okay? Uh, the learning is going to be the same, but we have to change those, those contents. And we have worked uh, in team groups, I think quite efficiently in order to transform, uh, for instance, uh, uh, information gap exercises to generally exercises, uh, boards into think link exercises. So we have developed a wide range of um, alternatives in order to change those uh, exercises and those activities that were really helpful and really good and really efficient on presential classrooms to the new uh, digital classroom. And I think if we don't do that, uh, we uh, well, we are not offering a good service. Uh, we are in the verge of um, getting our students bored uh, in the classroom, and I think that's that's one of the main um, well um, sources of of, of uh, failure in in any course. Okay, um, I would like to thank you for all your patience all your attention and of course i am completely available for any any uh, doubt query or, or explanation that you might want thank you pedro for that uh, very exhaustive and in informative literature on language teaching especially spanish teaching um, yes there are questions from our students uh, and students i would like you to ask any questions uh, that you want to know on from our guests. So your questions are most welcome. We already have the first question, uh, but just to tell our speakers that our students are, um, you know, like I said, they all are going through a, core, um, a Spanish elective and core course, which spans from uh, like uh, as uh, short as 30 hours to, uh, I think uh, it's about um, 200 and 200 hours, if I'm not wrong. The uh, most advanced are uh, 200 hours. So we have a variety of students here. Uh, now, the first question is about native speakers teaching uh, the language. And this has been a very big debate over English language teaching. I know native language teachers versus non-native mm -hmm. language teachers and I was part of this movement which was going on with English teachers. However, they want to know if uh, the question is there for you in the chat box, if Spanish makes uh, one, whether a native speaker of Spanish makes a better teacher in India or a native speaker of an Indian language who has undertaken advanced language training in Spanish can be a better teacher. And also if you could throw some lights on what are the opportunities of um, availing those facilities that you mentioned in your thing for students, for our students, uh, how can they avail some of the, um, uh, the facilities that you have, such as uh, if you have a library, can our students use that library? If you have any movies or anything, we, uh, can, we, can we see them? So these are the some, some things that we also would like to know uh, if there are any Spanish that we can borrow from you to show it to our students and if our students want to uh, buy, I mean want to watch some movies or want to read some books can they borrow books and things from your library so these are the questions from me and this question from the student mm -hmm. so we can address okay uh, first I, I'm going to do it um, one by one uh, the first question is is um, 
is um, a recurrent one and it's like a never solved uh, question about the primacy of native speakers uh, in front or against uh, non-native speakers. Okay, this comes from, um, to be honest, this, this is not something that has been like this always. E this was born, this idea, uh, because we think that everything has been uh, there forever, and it's not like that. This comes from the idea of the natural approaches in the 50s and 60s, where they think that the best way to learn a language was by what was called the natural input. This is an, an, an input, uh, an information conveyed by someone who is a native, which is supposed to be the one that is going to convey a better message in terms of phonology, in terms of lexicon, in terms of grammar, of use of, of grammar. Okay, this is uh, uh, an idea that is, is uh, to be honest, is completely old fashioned. And it has been overcome and it has been refuted. And uh, um, in my opinion, which is not only an opinion, is uh, to be honest, is an informed uh, idea. Is uh, there is um, the, if you if we think about all the skills that one language teacher should have, most of the skills a, a person should uh, should have doesn't have to do with the fact that he or she has one or another native language. This is the uh, if the 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 if you think about all the things that makes a, a class a, a, a good classroom a good classroom, there are very few things that has to do with the fact that someone is a native or a non-native uh, teacher. In other terms, uh, some of our best teachers are non-native. I'm not going to say that. There are some who are better or worse because of that, because that's, that is only one feature. And a, student, a teacher should know how to manage uh, the classroom, should know how to divide the students into different groups, should know how to uh, elaborate one sequence of activities, should know how to uh, analyze and, uh, and choose good materials and not and refuse bad materials should know how to uh, do a good assignment, should know how to uh, convey a very good lexicon or grammar explanation. What, in, in all that, what has to do with the fact that someone is native or not native? Very little, a very little percentage. So I think to master the skills of one teacher is something where well, the fact of being a native speaker doesn't have to do anything. If something, of course, to be a native speaker helps you in order to uh, be very secure, very safe when you talk, because uh, it's very easy for you to talk in your own language. But sometimes it's not so easy for you to think about the AINA uh, grammar rules that are below the language that you have used and you have never think about. So uh, in, in Instituto Cervantes, to sum up this uh, idea uh, or to summarize it, we uh, don't have any, we just uh, evaluate and think of the teachers uh, because of their performance, not their passport. And uh, we have very, very, very brilliant Indian uh, Spanish teachers. Amazingly brilliant. Okay. Uh, the second idea, well, the second question was library. Okay, library is open. I'm going to tell you from uh, on Tuesdays at this moment, you have to think that uh, we are in a very difficult situation. So every Tuesday, um, Saturday, and uh, another day is open from 10 to, 30, to, to 3 o'clock, uh, library, okay? There are three days a week where it's open. Okay, it is open, but uh, who are allowed to use it? Only students of Instituto Cervantes. If you want to use it, if you want to 
take any book. Uh, there's a, letter, a very little fee, I think it's about 1,000 rupees to use it for one year. I strongly recommend the students who want to use it because th there's a, a lot, a, a very uh, good, um, a, well, a range of resources, a CDs, DVDs, books, magazines, uh, even digital resources as audiobooks and ebooks. So uh, really is is worth is worthy the the one thousand rupees I think the fee. But at this moment, it's open only three days a week. I ask you please to to I'm going to send you the the email for people to get in contact with library. And um, I strongly recommend you to go there because it's, it's a very, very good library. Apart from that, well, we have uh, some um, student, uh, uh, teachers meeting where we welcome all our colleagues and also students who are studying Spanish as a degree. Uh, on the 5th and, and 6th of um, uh, December, we're going to have uh, one uh, teachers meeting um, Professor Gilani uh, came many times to this teacher, teacher's meeting, so uh, maybe you can be interested in that. Um, apart from that, we also offer uh, we, uh, many different courses and workshops, which are always, uh, uh, the fees are always very, very low. But regarding the library, uh, it's a very, very good resource. And I think it can uh, complement all the work that you have already done in Jindal University. There's a question from Professor Jilani himself. He's asking, is there mm -hmm. any internship possibility for our students at your institute? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the question is that internship at this moment, because of the very difficult, well, special situations we are facing, has been uh, seized, has been... And, and we're going to resume that uh, program as soon as we as we can, because we really want to go back to our premises and go back to our normal activity. We used to have uh, internships uh, for students, not only from from everywhere. No, we didn't make any distinction in between Instituto Cervantes students or anyone coming outside or from Cervantes, and. Uh, and you can see these this students working at the library or working in different uh, tasks. Some of them they were working on our social media. And to be honest, I think that they were all very happy and it helped them not only in terms of learning Spanish or improving their Spanish, but also in terms of uh, our work experience. Because uh, we, I think we, we try to, to help people in terms of improving their, their professional skills. And uh, well, we have, as uh, Dr. Puyo said before, many students who were part of these internships and now they are working in different companies or embassies. I would, I would only and, uh, like well, to add regarding the internship question that for that to be possible, an agreement has to be signed between both institutions. We don't entertain, mm -hmm. you know, individual requests. That's not possible. It, I mean, for that, you know, both the Jindal University and Instituto Cervantes New Delhi should sign an agreement because the students cannot approach as individuals, but only as part of your institution. That has to be, but of, uh, uh, as, as Pedro is saying, yes, that's perfectly possible once we resume our normal activities. Um, but the, the agreement is it's, it's a must, otherwise it's not possible. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Let me uh, kind of sound a note of caution here that we will be have to end the session by eight o'clock. So three minutes left. Uh, students, if you have any pressing questions that you want clarification from, uh, you should put it in the chat box. Otherwise, I would ask Neha to give the thank you note. Certainly we don't want to end the meeting without a thank you note. Uh, from my side, I'm really, uh, indeed, uh, very, very thankful to both of you for coming over and enlightening us about um, all that your institute does. 
uh, we would like, uh, of course, the conversation to go on with you. Uh, in the near future, we will planning. We are planning for a conference, and if you could be a speaker on that conference, that would be really a great honor for us. Uh, because uh, this this session was mainly for students. Mm, I hope students uh, benefited in from that. And if there are still some questions and some things that you need to get answers from, uh, this is for students. We can always arrange another meeting, another session sometime next semester or sometimes when things are better. Uh, so hoping for a more uh, relationship between, a more and better relationship between us. Uh, Neha, could you give a formal thank you note, please? Thank you so much, both of you. Well, no, thank you, Professor uh, Gopanayak. And uh, like uh, she just said, we have very little time left, but uh, it's been a pleasure to have uh, with us Professor Dr. Pujol and of course, Senor Navarro. And I would like to just thank them for their time and uh, for all that they've shared with us today. Les agradezco a ustedes y gracias a todos los profesores de la, del centro uh, aquí de la Universidad Jindal y sobre todo gracias a, a los estudiantes por unirse hoy. Thank you all y buenas noches. Buenas noches. Thank you. Good night. Hasta la próxima. Good night. Muy buenas noches. Muy buenas noches. Gracias. Good, goodbye, students. Thank you for coming and attending. And if you still have questions or if you still want to know about anything in Spanish, uh, please, uh, uh, you know, convey your message to your teachers so that we can have another session. Or if you want specific information on anything, uh, please do not hesitate to contact your teachers so that we can have another session if required. Okay. Thank Thank you, Professor Gopa. Thank you for Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. To ask your questions. <laughs> yeah, we have time <laughs> for this. No, no, it's not. Okay. Really nice. So lovely to see you all. Uh, hi, lovely. Nice to join in. I mean, it was really wonderful. You all. It was very nice that we actually did this. It was. It was very much required. Yeah, uh, I think we should all thank Professor Gopa for really pushing us to do. Mm -hmm. well, thanks, Prof <laughs> thanks, ma'am. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks a lot. You should thank me or curse me, but we did it. I think that's an achievement for all of us. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, ma you, ma thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Neha. Yeah, Deepika, ask your. Thanks, Neha. Yeah. Thank you.